Hi everyone and welcome back to another video with me, Ben Grist. Today we got another article by Asha Chi from Zealous Ministries and we're thinking about the topic of Is Jesus the Only Begotten Son of God? Many Christians are used to calling Jesus the Only Begotten Son of God and this is mainly influenced by the most popular rendering of John 3.16 in the English language which happens to come from the King James Version or the KJV translation of the Bible, in which in John 3.16 it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. But what does it mean that Jesus is God's only begotten Son? The Greek word rendered only begotten in the King James Version is this word monogonēs. During the early 17th century, the translators of the King James Version thought that the meaning of monogenes meant only begotten because it was composed of two parts. The prefix, mono, meaning only, and the verb, genau, which means to beget. When the NKJV, the new King James Version, was produced as a language update to the King James Version, the translation only begotten was just simply carried over. However, the second part of monogenes actually comes from the noun genos, meaning kind, as opposed to geno, meaning to beget as the KJV translators had thought. Hence the word monogenes actually communicates that Jesus was God's only kind or unique son and not that he was begotten by God in the same way that a father physically begets his son. A further confirmation that monogenes could not possibly mean only begotten is in its use in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17 where the writer refers to Isaac as Abraham's monogenes son where it says by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten monogenes son. Was Isaac really Abraham's only begotten son, as the King James Version translates it? Of course not. In fact, we know that Abraham had another begotten son, Ishmael, in Genesis chapter 16, verse 15. Therefore, Isaac could have not possibly been Abraham's only begotten son. On the other hand, it would certainly make more sense here if the Greek word monogenes meant only kind or unique instead of only begotten. The testing of Abraham, spoken of in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17, refers to the binding of Isaac in Genesis chapter 22, where in verse 2, God says to Abraham this, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. The Hebrew word rendered only son here is yachid, which means exactly the same thing as the Greek word monogenes, only kind, unique. In fact, monogenes was used as the primary equivalent to the word yachid. In the original Hebrew text, God refers to Isaac three times in one mention, as your son, your only kind whom you love, and Isaac. Now, this uh, highlights the intensity of Abraham's affections for his son Isaac, but it also shows what the author of Hebrews was meaning when he referred to Isaac as Abraham's monogenes son. Isaac was monogenes to Abraham, not because he was the only son that Abraham begot, but actually because Abraham loved him so much that he was irreplaceable, hence only kind. This is what made the test all the more difficult for Abraham because he was being asked to give up the thing that was most precious to him in the whole world. Interestingly, the Greek text of John 3.16 uses the same grammatical constructions of Jesus that the Hebrew text of Genesis chapter 22 verse 2 uses of Isaac. While God commanded Abraham to give up your son, your only kind whom he loved, God so loved the world that he gave up his only son, or more literally, as the Greek text puts it, his son, his only kind. Jesus is the monogenes son of God, because just as Isaac was to his father Abraham, Jesus was the most precious and most beloved person to his father God. Now, we might be able to understand what it felt like for Abraham when he was commanded to give up his monogenes son Isaac, but can we ever understand what it was like for God the Father to give up his monogenes son Jesus for us? That's all from us today but why don't you share some of your thoughts and opinions about this in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. You've been watching videos with me, Ben Grist. If you enjoyed it, then please do hit that subscribe button. But also, 
Feel free to leave a comment below if there's anything you'd like to see more of in the future. See you soon.